In this presentation, we will be discussing the confidence interval for a proportion. We'll start off with a motivating example from the literature. We will discuss the use of the sample proportion to provide a descriptive summary of a dichotomous outcome. In our example, this will be neonatal mortality. We will then introduce the concept of the confidence interval and discuss how it can be used to make generalizations from the sample proportion to the conceptual population proportion about which we wish to make inferences. Let's start with a New England Journal of Medicine article from 1993 titled, The Limit of Viability, Neonatal Outcome of Infants Born at 22 to 25 Weeks Gestation. This was a retrospective study of all premature infants born at 22 to 25 weeks gestation at Johns Hopkins during a three-year period. The primary outcome of the study was six-month mortality. The study results are summarized in this table and are presented by gestational age. In total, 142 infants were studied with an overall survival proportion of 0 0.39. At 22 weeks, there were zero infants surviving six months out of 29 observed, yielding a survival proportion of 0, 0.00. At 23 weeks, six out of 40 survived for a survival proportion of 0, 0.15. At 24 weeks, 19 out of 34 survived for a survival proportion of 0, 0.56. At 25 weeks, 31 out of 39 infants survived for a survival proportion of 0, 0.79. We refer to these survival proportions as sample proportions because they are calculated from the data we have collected. Presumably, the goal of the investigators is to use the results from their sample to make generalizations beyond the Hopkins context to inform decisions at other similar institutions in the future. Formally, we can say that the interest is in using these sample survival proportions to estimate population survival proportions. When generalizing from sample to population, there are two conceptual components that need to be considered. The first component is statistical in nature and is a result of engaging in sample-based research. We need to quantify the uncertainty that results from selecting random or representative samples from a population of interest. The second component to generalizing from sample to population is non-statistical in nature and is focused on clinical science considerations related to the external validity of sample results. When trying to extrapolate infant survival rates, sample characteristics such as demographic, clinical, geographic, facility, and clinical setting must be considered and the applicability and similarity of these characteristics to other institutions must be carefully examined. It is important to note that the external validity of these clinical factors generally cannot be quantified and are not formally accounted for in the statistical calculations we are discussing. The true confidence interval may be wider than that reflected by statistical calculations or may in fact be altogether invalid depending on the target population for generalization and its similarity to the sample that has been collected. This being a statistics course, we will primarily focus on the statistical component of generalizing results. Let's return to discussing how to quantify sampling variability, that is, the uncertainty that results from random sampling. For the remainder of the presentation, let's focus in particular on infants born at 24 weeks gestation. 19 out of 34 infants survived to 6 months, representing a survival proportion of 0.56 or a 56% survival rate. Let's assume for the moment that we were to repeat this same experiment at different hospitals which have similar characteristics to Hopkins. Conceptually, each of those samples can be thought of as a random or representative sample of the population of premature infants. If indeed these were representative samples, we would expect to see similar results across each sample with respect to the six-month survival proportion at 24 weeks gestation. However, we certainly would not expect to see exactly the same result. In order to know how good our estimate is, we need to be able to quantify how much it varies from sample to sample. Some terminology and notation. 
The goal is to use the sample survival proportion, commonly written as p hat, to say something about the population survival proportion, commonly written as a simple p. We refer to the sample proportion as a point estimate or a parameter estimate. The corresponding population proportion is referred to as a population parameter and is considered to be an unknown fixed value. When you analyze data, you don't know the actual population value. You only have the results from the single sample you have collected. The sample survival proportion is our best estimate of the population proportion and we want to know how good our estimate is. We quantify this by constructing an interval around the sample survival proportion that we believe will contain the population survival proportion. We call this range of values the confidence interval. This interval is generated using a mathematical prescription depending on values in the sample that will yield a desired level of assurance, what we call a confidence level, of containing the population parameter regardless of its actual value. It's important to remember that we don't ever know the population value, so the method for constructing the interval cannot depend on that value. Because the confidence interval is built on sample values, the interval itself will vary from sample to sample. Multiple researchers studying the same research question in the same general population will naturally gather different samples from that population and will therefore construct different confidence intervals. It's important to realize that each interval that's constructed will either contain the population parameter or it won't. Remember, the value of the population parameter is fixed. If you construct a confidence interval, the interval will either contain this value or it won't. The confidence level refers to the likelihood of including the population parameter when repeatedly collecting samples from the same population. Now we need to distinguish here between what practically happens and what the theory is based on. In practice, we only draw one sample. But the mathematical theory of the confidence interval is based on the conceptual idea of what happens when random samples are repeatedly collected from the population. If we understand how repeated sampling from the population behaves, then we only need one sample to construct an interval that provides a range of values within which there is confidence that this fixed unknown population parameter is included. Thus, the confidence level refers to the percentage of those confidence intervals constructed from repeated sampling that will contain the population value. The most common confidence level is 95%. This means that if we were to draw 100 different samples from a population and use this mathematical prescription for constructing 90, a 95% confidence interval for each of those samples, we would expect 95 out of 100 of those confidence intervals to contain the population proportion. We would expect that 5 of those 100 would not contain the population proportion. Let's illustrate this graphically. On the vertical axis shown here, we have listed proportions ranging from 0.2 to 0.8. For a gestational age of 24 weeks, let's assume that the population survival proportion is 0.59. Now let's simulate collecting a total of 20 random samples from the population of premature infants and construct a 95% confidence interval for each one. Let's draw a black bar to represent each interval and include a white hash mark to indicate the value of the sample survival proportion for each interval around which the interval has been constructed. Here are our 20 intervals. We expect that approximately 5% of the intervals or about 1 out of 20 intervals will fail to include this population proportion. The green interval shown here is the only interval that does not cross the red line and therefore doesn't contain the population proportion of 0 0.59. The Hopkins sample confidence interval, highlighted here in red, is centered at a sample survival proportion of 0 0.56, with a 95% confidence interval from 0 0.39 to 0 0.71, which happens to capture the assumed population proportion of 0 0.59. However, as mentioned, 
In practice, we have no idea whether or not the interval calculated from the Hopkins sample or any other sample is one of the intervals that contains the true population parameter. We also never know the value of the population parameter, just the range of possible values covered by the confidence interval. The bottom line is that you never know whether or not yours is a black or green colored confidence interval. This concludes segment one of two of our discussion of the confidence interval for a proportion.